All right, bless the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here another, another evening. We're so grateful uh, to be able to get in the word together another Wednesday night. We're just going to take a moment here and just allow folks to file in. And while that is happening, I just want to express uh, my appreciation on behalf of the entire Foundside family for all of you who are joining and who, and who support on a week to week basis. We're just um, so elated and grateful for all of you. And it is our prayer that this Bible study would be a, or is a blessing to you and a help to you. Um, and so we're just grateful to God uh, for that. And we wanna encourage everybody um, to feel free to visit our Fountainside YouTube channel. There is a wide gambit of ministry content there that um, you can be a part of and, and receive from and so uh, you can feel free to peruse through our our youtube uh channel there and uh, there may be a message for somebody that uh, will help them will minister to them will be a blessing to them and so you can feel free to uh go over there and, and take a peek and just support this ministry so I want to give everybody a moment just to hit that like button, the share button. Let's let's get the word out and get everybody in the Bible study tonight. I think tonight's Bible study is going to be a good one. It's going to be helpful. Uh, I think it's very meaningful. I think this is a topic that needs to be discussed, um, needs to be unpacked. And so I, I want as much people as possible to be a part of this discussion. So I was grateful to see Faye Dunn, Georgia Thomas, Norma, God bless you, Norma, Myrick, and uh, those who are joining right now. And so tonight we want to study the word and we want to talk tonight about the calling of God, the calling of God. And we want to identify a few things in reference to the calling of God and uh, there's some things that I think will be helpful to you. There's some things that maybe you haven't identified in reference to the calling of God. And so we wanna look at the calling of God and we want to therefore um, take a look at our lives and make sure that we are identifying how the calling of God impacts our lives. Because as a matter of fact, the calling of God absolutely impacts our lives. And so that's kind of where we want to go tonight um, as we study the word together. And so let's start. I'm going to open in prayer and then I will, then we will begin. So just agree with me in prayer as we pray tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness. We thank you tonight that we can be here to worship you, to honor you, that we can be here to study your word. I thank you for every viewer who is joining us to make the time to study your word, allow your word to embed itself richly in our hearts, that we would grow, that we would be strengthened, that we'd be encouraged, that we would be empowered and equipped to walk in the victory that you have laid out for our lives. And so bless this moment as we look into your word Let's have a viewer here on Facebook Live. And those who are joining us later on YouTube, allow your word to have its full course. As we look through and study your word now, we thank you for this, O Spirit of God. We thank you this, thank you for this, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all say, amen and amen. All right, so we want to talk tonight about the calling of God, the calling of God. The calling of God, and I think this is an important topic. Um, and so I want to start off tonight with this general question, is God calling 
you. Is God calling you? I think the call of God is, I think people have different perspectives on this and different uh, opinions on this. I guess I can use that term. Is God calling you? I got the answer for you. You better believe I got the answer for you. Um, and the answer is yes, God is calling. He's calling. But I want to hear from you as we begin. I'm going to ask a few questions. Let's start here. What does it mean to be called by God? What does it mean? So when he says, okay, you're called by God, what does that mean? I want to hear from you all. What, it, what does it mean to be called by God? Hmm. You take your time. I understand it's a, it's a, it is a nuanced question, so it's not just a necessarily a straightforward answer per se. I see here to be chosen for a specific purpose. First Lady Dr. Ruth says here to be chosen for a specific purpose. All right. Indeed. What does it mean to be called by God? means he has a purpose for you to fulfill what will bring glory to his kingdom. Thank you for that, Faye Dunn. And First Lady, Dr. Ruth continues and notes here. She says, I believe that we all have a purpose in life that we are to fulfill. I agree with that as well. If you're watching today, I need you to understand something. I don't know where you are in life and I don't, I don't know um, where life has carried you or brought you, but you have a purpose. You have a purpose. It is unequivocally undeniable that you have purpose. Um, and if you're watching tonight and you're struggling with purpose and you're struggling with why am I here? That's the wrong question. The, the, the question isn't why am I here, but the question is simply discovering your purpose. When I say why I'm here, people ask that question in, they ask that question in an assumptive way as if to imply there is no purpose. They ask why am I here because I have no purpose, but that's not the question. It's why am I here because I have purpose. And so we have to find that, we have to discover that. And that is discovered primarily in the call of God on your life. And so let's answer that question. What does it mean to be called by God? We can, we can say today, and I like that Faye Dunn continues, says we, we, she contributes and says, we are all born for a reason, everything that God does is purposeful. And I'll piggyback off of that. Uh, and I say this all the time. God does not create purposeless beings. Everything God creates has a purpose. Everything he creates has a purpose. And everyone he creates has a purpose. And so what does it mean to be called by God? It means that God has created us and God has designed us for a specific purpose, for a specific reason, to do a specific thing. That is a call of God, the purpose of God, the signature of God that has been left on the inside of us to be, to, to be exhibited out uh, to the world. Uh, the follow-up question, who is called by God? Who is called by God? And therefore, would you say, as a sub-question, so who's called by God? And as a sub-question, would you say that everyone is called by God? Mm -hmm. I want to hear this. Who is called by God? 
And would you say that everyone is called by God? I see here, uh, we all are. First lady says we all are called by God. Faydan agrees in the affirmative saying we all are called by God. But we have to answer the call. Okay, preacher. I'll let you come by Sunday and preach, Sister Faye Dunn. <laughs> and Sister Faye Dunn also contributes saying, many are called, along with Georgia Thomas, saying the same thing, many are called, few are chosen. Okay, so all right, so since y'all brought up that verse, many are called, few are chosen. Are you saying, therefore, that everybody, that, you know, it's not everybody who's called by God? Is that what you're saying? Because many are called, few are chosen. Many doesn't refer to all. Hmm. Well, we're going to get to the bottom of that in a moment. I'll say this. And, and this is not to conflict with scripture because the scripture is completely harmonious in its message and its teaching. But everybody is called by God. Everybody. Everybody is called by God. There's not one person who is not called by God. Now, the last question before we dive in here is, what is the call of God? How would we define it? Okay, so we spoke about, is God calling you? What does it mean to be called? But what is the call of God? How would you define it? What is the call of God? And this is an important question. This is a pivotally important, important question. What is the call of God? I see here, uh, our callings are different. We are all made uniquely to bring glory to God. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the chosen ones are prepared for God for a specific time and season. All right, all right, all right. And what is the call of God? Whatever God designed you for, what you are chosen to do, and I'll add to that who you are, who you are made to be. I like that. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. But we're going to dig in tonight to really get a full view and a full perspective of what the call of God is, because I think there's a lot of assumptions that I think there's a, I think that there's a lot of assumptions that we make regarding what the call of God is. And I think we maybe have to really take a step back and see the full view. I think some people have a very narrow view of what the call of God is. And, and, but, but I think it's broader than what people generally uh, attribute and, 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 and define as what the call of God is. God's calling, and this is what I want you to understand as we begin, and I, I want to thank uh, Sister Sheila. She's here with us, uh, one of our faithful founts inside uh, members. God bless you, Sister Sheila. Thank you for joining. Um, I am poor, so I can't talk to you. No problem, my dear, no problem. Okay. Um, and, so when, and so when we talk about the call of God, Let's start here. God's calling is his personal invitation for us to have relationship with him. This is a baseline definition of the call of God. And I think uh, what happens many a time is when we talk about the call of God, we consider the call of God in the context of what I do for God and what I do for the kingdom of God. What I do in a religious order, in a religious sense, what I do, that is my calling. And we use that phraseology rather loosely and we use it rather liberally. But Jesus, he, he, uh, Jesus puts a pin in that mentality. 
if you look with me, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Jesus puts a pin in that and he pops that bubble real good and real quick. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. And listen to the words of Jesus here in Matthew 7, verse 21. And we'll read down. And we'll read down um, to verse 23. And the Bible says this, Jesus speaking, he says, It's not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will, we talked about, he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So, so Jesus is identifying that, hey, if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you got to do the will of my Father. And look at, look at the error of many. And Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, referring to the day of judgment, this is Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Many will say to me, verse 22 says, Jesus says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, watch this. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Then, and Jesus says in verse 23, and, and then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, I want you to catch what Jesus is, catch what, catch what Jesus is saying here. He's saying something important that I want you to really pick up what he put down here. Jesus is saying, okay, not everybody who cries, Lord, Lord, shall enter. But then we see people identifying what they perceive to be their call. You catch that? In verse 22, people begin to perceive what is their call. And they say, but we did this in your name. And we did that in your name. We prophesied in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We did many wonder works in your name. And therefore, those individuals saying this to Jesus, they are, they are, they are identifying what they believe their call to be. Listen, you, you can consider this moment right now going back to the basics, going back to elementary, going back to, as, as Paul said, the Apostle Paul spoke to the epistles, or, or as, as the Apostle Paul wrote in the epistles to the churches, he said, we're going back to the rudimentary things of the gospel, the, the rudimentary teachings. And it begins here that the call of God on your life is his personal invitation to have a close relationship with him. That's the call of God. The call of God on our life is to be in relationship with him. And that Greek word is keltos, which is often translated called, but, but it can also be translated as invited. So the call of God is, is an invitation to be in relationship with him. That is, that is the primary call of God in your life is to get near to him, is to be in relationship with him. And I think what happens many a times is people feel like, well, look, if I'm doing this, I'm fulfilling my calling. And therefore, you can, you, can, you can fulfill a role in ministry. Watch this. It is possible to fulfill a role in ministry while never actually doing his will. Because his will, the will of God is not for us to do for him something in the kingdom primarily, but it is to be in relationship with him. And it is out of that relationship that we will do things effectively for the kingdom of God. But what happens many a times is that we end up putting the cart before the horse. And there are people who get caught up in the doing the doing, the doing, the doing, doing this for God and, and doing this for ministry. And, and you know what? I go to prayer meeting and, and you know, I sing on the choir and, and, I, and, 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 I, and you know, I, 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 I cut the grass at church and I, I do all this stuff for God. 
I'm a deacon, I'm a mother, I'm an evangelist, I'm this, I'm that. But we want to identify the call of God. Look, look here at John 6.44. John 6.44. The call of God, the call of God is not what you do for God. The call of God primarily is a call to be in relationship with him. And as we read in Matthew, not all who cry, Lord, Lord, shall enter. Why? Because God is not interested in what we do for the kingdom. He's interested in, he is interested in our relationship with him because out of that relationship, we will do for the kingdom. John 6, 44 says, no man come unto me except, Jesus said this, no man come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him in the last day. This, this passage is speaking to the invitation. It's speaking to the invitation that God is sending out into the world. Look at Romans. We're going to travel here in the Bible. Romans 11. Verse 7, Romans 11, verse 7. So great to see everybody here. I see Sister Carol Coleman. God bless you, woman of God. Good to see you. I see Vita McLeod, my, my, uh, my mother, my Mary, <laughs> my mother. Good to see you, Mama. Romans 11, verse 7 says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh, that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now, this may seem like a random verse, but I want you to consider the content here in Romans eleven seven, 7. Paul is writing and saying, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. Israel sought for a Messiah. They they sought for the answer to salvation through their perspective. And, 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 and Paul is saying, Israel, have not, they have not obtained that, that which they seek. But the election, those who have been chosen, those who have been called, have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Mm, now, follow me. Talking about the call of God. Look at verse 25 and verse 26 of the same chapter, Romans 11, look at verse 25 and 26. Paul continues to the Roman church and he says, for I would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, yet lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that the blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And so we see here a theme of this idea of a called, a group of called individuals and those who are blind. That's what we're seeing here. And some would read that, some would read that and say, well, hold on a minute, sir. It seems as if, in fact, God calls some and not others, but that's not what but did, but that's not what the scripture is saying here. The scripture is referring to those who were called, but others were blind. Just because you're waving me down and you're calling me, if I'm not, if I don't see you, it doesn't mean you were calling. It doesn't mean that you weren't calling me. We say this all the time as men, we're guilt, a lot of men, husbands, uh, guilty of this, where, where we could be watching the game and my wife is talking I, and I don't even hear, I'm, I'm into the game or maybe I hear, but I'm not listening. Just because somebody is calling, it doesn't mean you actually heard maybe. And, 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 and therefore, I think it is true that there are many who are called, but they are not in a position to hear. I think there are many who've been called, but they rebuffed the call. They ignored the call. 
They rejected the call. They pretended like they didn't hear or see the call. They weren't inquisitive about what God was saying in that moment in their life. And that brings me back to Moses when Moses was walking in the backside of the desert. Somebody who came from the height of success and brought down to the lowest of lows, leading his father's sheep in the, on the backside of the desert. And he saw a burning bush that it was burning in the bush was not consumed. And Moses specifically said, let me turn aside to see why this bush burns and is not consumed. He saw that something supernatural was happening. And he said, hold on, let me, he said, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, let me turn aside to see what is happening here. In other words, what what that teaches us, and listen, I don't know who this is for, but when God is doing something in your life, pay attention, don't ignore it. When God is doing something different, why is this happening in my life? Why is this happening in my situation? When God is doing something in your life, don't just ignore it. Turn, turn and take a look at what God is doing. And watch this. In that moment, when Moses turned to see what God was doing, he approached the supernatural work that God was doing in his situation. And the rest was history. We know who Moses is. If Moses had ignored what God was doing, we would not know who Moses is today. I'm talking to that Moses out there who is walking through the backside of the desert of their own lives. Keep your eyes open for what God is about to do in your life. Keep your eyes open. And when you begin to witness the work of God, don't ignore it. Turn aside and see what God is doing. God is calling. And therefore, when we read these passages where, where, where there are a called and then there are those who are blinded, it speaks, to, it speaks to the fact that God is calling people. Some open their eyes to the call of God, while others are blinded and they ignore it or they turn from it. And so therefore, some would say, they would read this to say, well, no, not everybody is called. No, and everybody is called. It's just some are blind. Some are deaf to the call of God. Now, I, I want you to help me out real quick and name for me some people in Scripture who are called to the kingdom of God for a specific purpose. Shoot, just uh, shoot out some names. Name for me some people in the scripture, shout it out also, just name or shout out some people in scripture who are called and who are called for a specific purpose. Shoot at anyone who comes to mind. See Joshua, Esther, jo sorry, Joseph, apologize. Joseph was definitely called absolutely Esther, yes, Elijah, 1,000%, uh-huh, yep, those are a few, we can say Moses, I see Samson, yep, Mary, mm -hmm. Abraham, absolutely, people who are called for a specific purpose, right, now, I see David, yep, now, name for me people who Name for me people. I see Solomon, Adam and Eve, Mahibosheth. Really impressive that that was even spelled correctly because that's not an easy one. Mahibosheth, that's right. Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, Paul, Peter, John the Baptist. All right, I like that. Now, now name for me people who are called but maybe not necessarily called to open the Red Sea, or maybe not necessarily to show forth the handiwork of God in terms of sitting in a lion's den or standing in a burning fire. Name for me people who were also called, but maybe not necessarily to that, to that level, or not, not to that level, but people who, people who were called maybe not to do something that specific. 
and, I, and I'll start off with one just to give you context. Nicodemus, Nicodemus, that's one. Nicodemus is somebody who maybe wasn't called to open the Red Sea. Nicodemus maybe wasn't called like Peter to speak to thousands of people and to lead the church in that day, but he was still called by God. He was still called by God. Another person who was called by God, but maybe not, uh, I see Deborah, absolutely. Hey, Paul. Sorry? Paul. The Apostle Paul? Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. The, yes, definitely the Apostle Paul. You see, and, and people like the Apostle Paul, like Deborah, John the Baptist, these people are individuals in whom God calls and God really shows forth his hand in drawing them because they're called for a specific purpose. But then you have those who don't have the type of Apostle Paul experience, those who don't have the Peter experiences, those who don't have the Daniel experiences, right? You got those like Nicodemus who just climbed up in a tree to hear from Jesus. You got people like Simon the sorcerer. Remember Simon? Um, uh, 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 Simon is the one who, uh, <laughs> Simon is, Simon the sorcerer in the book of Acts is the one who, um, the one who told, who told the, uh, the uh, the uh, disciples or the uh, the uh, apostles, let me buy, let me purchase with gold the power to to lay hands on people and and pour forth the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, "You are full of wickedness and and gall, and may God have mercy on your soul." Peter rebuked him sharply, right? But but Simon the sorcerer was also being called by God, for he God wooed him and 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 he. He gave his life to Christ. And um, I, there was another person who, who was called by God, who maybe, um, wait, oh, hold on. I see a plethora says a servant, the help servant who encouraged the, the who? Looks like leprechaun. I think, I think that's a cereal, <laughs> but, but you can, but, Oh, oh, Zacchaeus, thank you. Gotcha. Um, but there is another person, the what about the Ethiopian eunuch? Right? The Ethiopian eunuch was somebody who was called by God. He opened the scriptures and and asked Philip, what does this mean? And what did the man of God say? He said, He said, Well, here is water. Here is water. Why not be baptized? What I'm trying to say is that there are people who are called in a very magnanimous way. God shows up, God speaks, an angel comes down and they're called and their purpose is so greatly emphasized. And then there are those who get saved, those who find Jesus, they also are called. What I'm trying to say is that everybody is called by God. Every last Buddy, every last person is called by God. Everybody is called by God. And the word tells us the word specifically tells us. I want you to turn with me. Let me let me pull up this passage here. One second. For some reason, here we go. So I, I, I want you to see this passage. Turn with me. Um, turn with me to Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. And I want you to see what the scriptures are saying here. Second Peter chapter three and verse nine. 
Listen to what the word says here. The Bible says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some, as some count slackness, but is patient towards you. Watch this. Look what the word says here. Not wishing for any to perish, but for, for some, but for some to come to repentance. No, it doesn't say that some should come to repentance, but the Bible says that all should come to repentance. And so what the word of the Lord is teaching us here is that everybody is called, because let me emphasize this again, the calling of God, and I want you to get this in your soul, get this in your spirit, the call of God is not what you do for the kingdom. The call of God is not what you do in church. The call of God is not the title that you carry in church. The call of God is God's invitation to be in relationship with him. Forget about doing things for God. Forget about what you do in church. That is not the call of God. That is a byproduct of the call of God. That is a positive consequence of the call of God. But the call of God is to be in relationship with him. And out of that symbiotic relationship, out of, out of, it, out of, out of that unified relationship, we will do things and we will glorify the name of God and, and we will glorify the kingdom of God. But it begins by being called to love God, to be in relationship with God. And so we want to establish right now that in fact, everybody is called by God. There is nobody who is not called by God. And so, and so there are some that are called for a specific purpose and called to fulfill a specific role. And then there are others who are called for different roles. And, 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 and the Bible, uh, and the Bible, is quite clear. Listen to what the Bible says. Um, the Bible teaches about the body of Christ. And, and the Bible says everybody can't be the feet or the hands. We all play a role. We all play our role. And that's why the calling of God is important because we all come together to form, hence the term, the body of Christ. The body of Christ simply refers to the, the body of Christ refers to the variety of roles played by different people. And so my calling will be different than your calling, but, but listen, but, but, but your calling is just as valuable as anybody else's calling. So you are called by God. There are, there, there, are, there are people who out of their calling, their relationship with God, they cook real good and God, and God anoints their hands to cook. And there are those who are anointed uh, out, of, out of their love for God. They help maintain the physical building of the church in terms of ma maintaining a church building. Everybody has a call for a specific purpose and a specific role. Out of that calling, we do the work for the Lord. So let's look at how God describes those who are called. Turn to Luke 12, verse 32. Luke 12, 32. And the Bible says here, fear not, little flock, for it, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is how God, and I like that, Sister Faye then says we cannot earn the call of God, amen to that. It's something that we receive as a, benef as a, as a beneficiary of our relationship with him, uh, amen to that. And the Bible says here in Luke 12, 32, fear not, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God views us as his little flock, his precious flock. That is who we are. We are not um, slaves, as it were, but we are his flock. We are his flock. You've got to understand who you are to God and how, views, and, and how God views you. All right? Now, when we talk about being called, here's another question. What, what are we called out of? If we're, 
we're called. And 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 First Peter two verse nine teaches us this. Go to First Peter two nine. And, and look here at what the word says. That's right. I've lived it hard. Look at what the word says here. We're called out of darkness. We're called out of sin. And yes, we're called out of darkness. We are called out of sin. And this is what the word is teaching us. The Bible says here in 1 Peter 2 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Now, I want you to embrace what the passage is saying here. We're a chosen generation. Notice the wide application of who this applies to everybody. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that, that now, 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 here's a part I want you to highlight, underline, focus on here. The second half of verse nine, that ye would show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word is emphasizing the call. We are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is speaking of salvation. The call of God is a call to deliverance, a call to breakthrough, a call to freedom. The call of God is not a call to do a thing or a call to be an evangelist or a call to be a pastor. No, we are called out of darkness into his light. And as we walk into his light, we discover, we discover and God begins to unpack our purpose so that we fulfill it. But that is done out of our relationship. And so here is the challenge. The challenge is this. We must not allow. We must not allow what we do for God to be disconnected from our relationship with God. I'm going to say it again. We must not allow what we do for God to be disconnected from our relationship with God. As soon as what we do for God becomes disconnected from our relationship with God, then we have immediately become pharisaical. We have immediately become religious in the sense that we're doing religious things without being connected to him. And I think that may be a challenge for some. And this challenge, now I'll ask this, where do we see this challenge in the body of Christ? Do we see this type of thing happen in church? And, and, and if so, where, where do we see it in the body? What demographic does this happen to more than others in the body of Christ. Amen. God bless you, Sister Rhoda. Watching all the way from the land of Trinidad and Tobago. So the question was, where do we see this issue within the body of Christ where somebody can be doing something for God while being disconnected? The answer is, we usually see it in those who've been in church the most, the longest, the more seasoned, the quote unquote, the more seasoned saints, where the longer you've been in church, it, the longer a person is in churches, the more they are, they are at risk of, of just doing things because it's what you do as a Christian. You just go through the motions. And that's, and that's what the Pharisees did. Jesus had to rebuke the Pharisees. 
Jesus said, you Pharisees have forgotten the way to your matters of the law. He said, you've forgotten what actually matters. And you're focused on the laws and focused on religious dogma and focused on religious rules and, 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 and focused on what doesn't save souls, but, but actually what in fact delivers souls to hell by pushing people out. And so I want to encourage everybody today, evaluate your life, make sure that whatever you're doing for God, it is born out of your relationship with God. And it is sustained by your relationship with God. Because what actually happens is when we start doing things independent of our relationship with God, it then becomes a burden. It becomes a burden. You know, you can do things, you are motivated to do things for people you love because you care for them. Take away that love. How much are you going to do for? <laughs> it'll, it'll, it, it will become a burden. I got to do this for you again. I got to pick you up again. I got to do this again, right? That's what happens when we do things without relationship. It becomes a burden. It becomes mundane. It becomes an unvirtuous cycle in, in our lives. And that's why we read Jesus said, not all who cry, Lord, Lord, shall enter, because they would have done things. And Jesus responded by saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus said, yes, yes, you did all these things, but I don't know you. Ooh, you catch that? Jesus said, yes, you've done all these things, but I don't know you. My God, that is a perfect picture of those who are called and they are doing for God, but they don't know God. My goodness. That's heavy. And so is it possible in our lives that we are doing for God while not knowing God? Is that possible? And so I wanna challenge you tonight, make sure, make sure in your life, you are number one, make sure you're answering the call of God. I, I, and I like what Faye Dunn says, relationship with God is more important than anything else. That is absolutely true. Tonight, I want to encourage you to really take a step back and ask yourself, am I answering the call of God? Because that's the most important thing. And I want to go back to the beginning. The calling of God is his personal invitation to us to have a close relationship with him. That is what it means to be called by God. And so we have to ask ourselves, Am I answering this call? Am I answering the call of God on my life? Or am I just going to church? Am I answering the call of God on my life? Or am I just singing on the choir? Am I answering the call of God? Or, or am I just pastoring? It's possible to be a pastor and not answer the call of God. It is absolutely possible. <laughs> am I doing the religious things, but, I don't, but I'm not near to God? anymore. We have to answer the call. We got to answer the call. I, I want you to see what else the, the word of the Lord says about the call of God. Let me get there. A few minutes. All right. So I want to establish that everybody is called by God. And I want you to turn to 2 Timothy 1, verse 9. Second Timothy 1, verse 9. And listen to what the word says here, referring to God who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. Watch this, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose 
and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus. When, when, when? When? Before the world began. Number one, God is saying here, your purpose existed before the world began. So to that person who's struggling with suicidal thoughts, to that person who's struggling with discovering their purpose, your purpose has been established from the beginning of time. It doesn't actually, before the world began, before the beginning of time, actually. And so what you need to understand is that it's not a question of whether you have purpose. Now you can pursue God to discover your purpose. Amen. But watch this. This passage also says this, referring to God who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. Our salvation is the call. And this call of God this call of God is not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. Underline his own purpose. Underline that. His own purpose. It's not according to our purpose. There are people who, <laughs> it, there are people who maybe don't even necessarily fall in love with God per se but they fall in love with being a pastor in God's church. They fall in love with something about ministry, something about the church. And that's the motivating factor. But here the word of God is saying that we are called to this holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ. In other words, if you want to discover God's purpose and grace in your life, it has been given to you through Christ. You find Christ, you find your purpose. You dig in with Christ, you receive the fullness of grace. And this was given to you before the world began. Now, how do we, let's, let's, let's wrap it up more or less with this. So I want you to underline 2 Timothy 1.9, all right? And then jump now with me to Romans 12, because the question then becomes, how do I pursue the call? You're saying, all right, all right, pastor, I get it. I'm called. And you're saying, I, I, I never really considered myself to be called per se, but God is calling. And the Bible gives us instructions on how, on how, on how to fulfill that call. Romans 12, verse one and two. The Bible says, the Bible gives us specific instructions on how to fulfill the call of God. And the word says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And watch here what the word says in verse two. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so the word of the Lord here is teaching us how to pursue the call. We present ourselves before God as vessels, as living sacrifices, holy. That word holy ain't used a lot these days, but we can't ignore that word holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then the Bible directs us how to do this from the inside out. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's the key. If, if you're going to pursue the call of God, you got to 
you got to have a different mindset. And there are those who pursue the call of God by trying to present themselves as living sacrifice. Well, this is what I'm going to do for God. And then I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to do this for God. This is what I'm going to do for God. And they try to present themselves as living sacrifices, but they skip verse two. They skip verse two and they are not conformed. Or rather, they are conformed to the world, but they are not transformed. They're conformed, but they, they, they are conformed. In other words, they try to serve God while being already conformed to the world. It's like trying to put a key that has been conformed to one specific door into another door that, listen, that key has to be transformed to fit this door for it to work. We also must be transformed to fulfill the call that God has on our lives and, and has upon us. And so tonight, I want you to understand a few things as we close. Number one, the call of God on your life is sure. And maybe you have lived your life never viewing yourself as somebody who is called by God. But the Bible is absolutely clear that you are called by God. So you, so you need to accept this truth and accept the fact that you are in fact called by God. God has sent you an invitation to be in relationship with him. That's your calling. That's your calling to be in relationship with him. And out of that call, you will do things for God. And souls will be saved. So number one, you got to recognize that you are called by God. Number two, you need to recognize that because you are called by God, to be in that relationship with God, as you pursue the relationship with God, God will unfold your purpose. That's how it works. But there are so many people who try to find out their purpose in order to strengthen their relationship with God. Well, well, you know, if I could do this for God, I'm going to get stronger in God. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. You get strong in God. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You get strong in God and God will anoint you. God will empower you. God will inspire you. God will lead you. But, 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 your, but your labor for God begins out of your relationship with him. And so I think there's somebody there. I think there's somebody listening today. You need to go back. You, you, you need to go back to the rudimentary things of your faith. And you need to go back to the beginning and and reestablish and reaffirm and strengthen. As, as Jesus told the churches in the book of Revelation, he said, strengthen, strengthen those things that remain. In other words, there are areas that have dwindled, areas that have struggled. And God said, you know, you, you got to strengthen that. That's what God is saying to us tonight. Listen, you are called by God. The question tonight is, will you answer the call? Will you answer this call? You are called. Will you answer the call? The Lord told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, he said, I consecrated you and I appointed you a prophet to the nation. God is saying, from you were in, and I love this passage, because when the Lord says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you, this is to say that it doesn't matter the circumstances of your birth. It doesn't matter the environment in which you were born into, you have a purpose. It doesn't matter what mom and them did. It, it doesn't matter what was happening in your life. It doesn't matter if, listen, 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 it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter if they weren't even planning for you. God was planning for you. <laughs> Maybe they didn't plan for you. And, and guess what? To them, they said, we didn't even plan, man. This was an accident. Listen, to God, it was no accident. This was his, his purpose for you to be here. 
And so answer the call and do the work of God. We're out of time. But listen, I want you to be encouraged tonight to know that God has called you. And maybe you've lived your life questioning this truth. Maybe you've gone through your Christian experience saying, you know, that person's called and, and that person's called and that person's called, but eh, it ain't for me. I'll just, I'll just sit back here. It's funny, you know, uh, it was David who was in the back. who said, I'll, I'll just sit back here. And God thrusted him to the front. Why? Because he answered the call. He established a relationship with God. And in due season, God, God thrusted him into the purpose that God had for him. That is going to be your story. That is going to be your life as you pray, as you read the word, as you draw near to God, as you, tr as you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you and to remake you and to mold you, you will begin by, by virtue, by virtue of your relationship with God, you will begin to answer the call. You'll be walking down the street answering God's call. You will walk into work and somebody will say something to you and you will respond in a way that ministers to their heart. That's you answering the call. God will use your life just by you being who you are because that is that is the purpose that he poured into you. It is in your DNA. It is in your biological, metaphysical makeup. It is in you. He's called you. So answer the call. Answer the call. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I pray that this Bible study was helpful. I pray that it was informative. I pray that uh, you would leave here with something to, to pray about, to think about, to really work on. I pray that uh, you will leave here with something meaningful that will better your spiritual walk with the Lord. On behalf of uh, First Lady Dr. Ruth and the entire, uh, my, my wife, First Lady Dr. Ruth, and the entire Founderside family, we just are so grateful for each of you who support us weekly. And while you're here, just take a moment and, you know, support us with a like or a share. Uh, copy this link and, and you can send it out to, uh, to your friends. Uh, if you have nieces, nephews, young people, they need to know that God has called them. And so say, hey, let's tell them, jump on this Bible study while you're, while, while you're working out at the gym or while you're driving on the way to work or something. Go, go, go ahead and listen to this. Listen to this Bible study. It's for you. It is time to answer the call of God on your life. Bow with me, let's pray, and I will let you go. Father, we thank you tonight that you have not left us without a call. And we thank you tonight for the clarity in which you have brought forth for us to understand that your calling is not what we do for you, but your calling is the relationship that we have with you. And that it is out of this loving relationship that we discover what we do for you. And it is born out of us what we do for you. But help each viewer and each listener right now to pivot back to the old landmark. Help us for a moment to go back to the place where we first met you. Help us to hit that reset button and to bow the knee in prayer. Help us to hit that reset button and to open and to literally wipe the dust off of our Bible and begin to read the word. Help us to discover you again and therefore to answer the call. May we not echo the words of those in the book of Matthew who said, who cried, Lord, Lord, but did not enter because they said, yes, we did all of this. We cast out devils in your name. We did wonderful works for your name. We fed the hunger. We clothed the naked. And you said, depart from me because I don't know you. Help us not to be of that number, but help us to know you. Father, even if, even if it means we don't do anything in ministry, may we know you. Even if it means we don't preach another sermon, may we know you. Even if it means we don't sing another song on a worship team, may we know you. Even if it means we don't do anything, anything in ministry specifically, may we know you and know you in your fullness. Help us to answer the call. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we all say, amen and amen.
Praise God. Listen, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We love you so much. Lord Terry's, we will be back next Wednesday to study the word of God. Again, hit that like button, hit that share button. And you can also visit us if you if you enjoyed this Bible study, you can definitely visit our, our, our fountain side uh, YouTube channel. We have all of our Bible studies there. You can jump on in and join the conversation. We would uh we we definitely appreciate your love and support. Listen, have a great night again on behalf of my wife, First Lady Dr. Ruth and the Fountainside family. We love you. Join us Sunday at 12 uh, or at 12 30 in person, 70 20 Pines Boulevard. Come down, worship with us. Or if you can't join us in, in person, meet us right here on Facebook Live, one o'clock. Join us in the word of God. God has a word for you. You don't want to miss it. We love you. God bless you. Lord Terry's and Spirits, we'll see you next week. Have a tremendous week. Answer the call.